Today I'm going to show you how to paint on a slatted surface from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to show you some really cool techniques. Okay, so for just three bucks, you can get this really cool little wooden sign with its string already attached. So this is just a wonderful, um, a wonderful little surface. I really like it. It's actually really nicely made. Um, I'm going to use mocha, and we've talked about this before. This is a stain. It's a Minwax Early American, no, Minwax um, water-based um, stain. And I made a paint chip of each of the stains that I bought. And so I can tell this looks very green in the jar, but this is actually the color that is mocha. So today I'm using mocha and that is number 280. We have a couple challenges with these slats. <clears throat> if I stain on top, then the stuff that is visible in my slat is going to um, not be as, um, it's, not going to look even. It's going to have contrast. So I want to make sure that I can get into the slatted area. So I've got a couple tools we'll talk about. Okay, the first tool is my skinny um, feathering brush. What I like about the feathering brush is it's a rough brush, which means I don't have to be nice to it. Okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to address the in-betweens first. And so I'm going to just stuff that feathering brush in there and get that back slat and I'm just feathering on top. I want to stay off of the main surface if I can. I've mixed just a little bit of water. Okay. If I wanted to, I could go back here and just take care of the sides of things. I could just stain the whole thing. If I get stain on the wood area before I stain stain it, then it can make um, a, a layered stain look and it's very difficult to um, conceal. So I'm just making this liquid a little bit so it flows. Could just do the whole little back of this. It's always a good idea to finish your projects on the back and the front. I'm actually bad about doing that, um, but it's a good idea because when you get caught, when somebody flips a project over, then you're like, ugh, I should have finished that. So it's really a good idea to just go ahead and finish it. Take the five minutes it takes. So I've got that part done. I'm going to wet my sponge. This is my definition of running water right here. Um, these little paint bottles with different mediums in them are so handy. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna pick up our stain and then we're going to wipe it on. You wanna move quickly because if it starts drying, you're gonna have that layered effect. And then if you want it lighter, you can wipe it off with the back of your sponge. If you want it darker, you can do coats. All right, guys, so I've done this beautiful job of staining my board and making it all even. And then my top board isn't like my other board. So this is what you do get when you have a Dollar Tree type situation. Um, that is unacceptable to me. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put a top coat on top of this and then I'm going to distress it and give it a, just a different look. So um, beware. We're going to pivot to plan B. So I'm gonna use number 79, which is a cream color. I'm going to use one of our foam brushes. Our foam brushes are fantastic for basing because they're very firm. If you've ever used a really cruddy a uh, foam brush that just kind of flops around like a wet noodle, you know what I'm talking about. These are excellent for this. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about the insides. So I just want it on the top of my boards.
We can leave some streaks. That's the other thing these brushes do really well is they do a really good job of antiquing and doing that like feathered look. If you're gonna do this kind of distressing, you wanna make sure that you keep your lines straight. Um, if you start swooping and you make them curved, it just doesn't carry very well. All right, now that I've done that step, I'm going to go ahead and sand through just to give it an overall old pieces of boards look. So this is catching um, the cross um, cutting, um, which is pro probably part of its charm, just because it's kind of uniform and doing all of that kind of thing. I think I wanna go in with a little bit of teal. In this case, Peacock, it's number seven. And I'm gonna use this like jewelry. So I just wanna have just a little bit here and there. All right, and I think I'll tuck in just a little bit of black. I'll drag that in just a little bit further. And if you're afraid to antique um, or do this kind of distressed look, practice on cardboard boxes until you get like the flick right. Cause it does take like a little bit of training. Um, I didn't wake up one morning and be like, I'm gonna know how to do this. I had to actually practice too. Okay, and then we can take that same sanding. Just knocks everything back just a little bit. Okay, let this dry. In the meantime, I'm gonna talk about stencils. It's like my favorite subject. <clears throat> okay, so we've got a slatted board and we have this big gap. If you have a word that is going to fall right in the middle of the big gap, you gotta make sure that you position it so that you don't miss like the important stuff, like the things that stick out of the E's, the F's, that kind of thing. So you might move it up a little bit. Um, <clears throat> in this case, this welcome word fits my middle slat just fine, but then my swirls do not. So I'm going to just do them individually and pretend like this is three different stencils. If I had art that I wanted to put on here, oh, that'd be so cute with this. Oh man. I like the mandala on there. Um, anyway, if I had art that I wanted to, I would make sure that my points were thoughtfully placed. So like in this case, I wouldn't want my point to disappear right out of the middle of that slap because I think that would ruin the effect. So I would position it so I could take advantage of those being a complete moment. Okay, so just think about your stencil when you're doing something like this and, um, and um, don't forget to take in account these slats. Okay, so in this case, this would work, but not with my arrows. So I could use each of these word things um, separately, and then maybe I could try to work in an arrow on like the skinny word area. Okay, so we're gonna use the welcome sign. Get a little T-square action going here. So sometimes your letter placement, um, like that W sticks out over there, right? And the E is straight like that. So your E is gonna look like it's closer than the W will have all that like extra white space. So you can kind of tuck it back over just a little bit. And then of course, make sure that you're straight. When you don't have any place to tape, which I do not, then you get creative and you're just gonna tape through. So I'm gonna go here and here and just make sure you push it in on top of there that's not going to be a very secure 
tape, so don't be jostling too much, but it should get the job done. Okay, so let's get a dome stencil brush. If you've ever had problems um, bleeding under your stencils, then you want to use a dome stencil brush. It solves all of that for you. Okay, and so now in this case, because I'm not taped securely, I'm going to stipple. And now I'm going to lie. I'm going to swirl. Swirling is just faster. So much faster. Okay, and then I'll go back to the beginning and do it again. Um, when you're using your dome brush, um, always offload. I do about five to 10 swirls, depending on how dark things are gonna be. Okay, and we are done with that part. Ta-da! Okay, and now we apply the top part. And I think I'm not going to tape because my letters are fresh. So I will reload. One nice thing about doing something on a $3 surface. So say you have a friend who just got married or you had somebody that moved to a new apartment or a house and you could make them a very thoughtful gift with a welcome sign. Everybody likes a welcome sign and um, and then you give them just this lovely, thoughtful gift that doesn't cost a lot, but it'll just 15 minutes of time. A little bit of paint. Okay, got that. And is there anything else to do? Maybe some spatters. The waterier your paint is when you're spattering, the fatter your spatters will be. And spattering will leave a big mess on your table. <clears throat> so if you don't want it messy, then um, do this on a towel or have a cleanup rag. And I'm purposefully leaving it around the edges. For $3 in surface cost, a little bit of paint, and about 15 minutes in time, we've got a finished product that would make a phenomenal gift or just a DIY statement in your house. If you like this video and you want to see more, make sure that you subscribe, ring the bell, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.